In this short video, we're going to explore the properties of continuous functions. If I have two con continuous functions, f and g, they are both continuous at the number a, and c is a constant, then what can I say? The sum of continuous functions is continuous. The difference of continuous functions is also continuous. If I take a continuous function and multiply it by a constant, I still have a continuous function. The product of continuous functions is continuous. And the quotient of continuous functions is also continuous, provided that the denominator is not equal to zero. Note that from the definition of continuity that a function will be continuous at x equals a if and only if we can evaluate the limit as x approaches a of f of x by direct substitution. That is, we already know of some functions where we can evaluate their limits using direct substitution. So we can conclude that they are continuous. On the other hand, if we know a function is continuous at x equals a, then we can evaluate the limit as x approaches a of f of x by direct substitution. So from what we've already learned, when we discussed evaluating limits using direct substitution, polynomials must be continuous functions. Rational functions must be continuous functions on their domain. Remember, rational functions are functions which are fractions of polynomials. And also, radical functions are continuous functions on their domain. And in addition, just as a fact, uh, we're not going to prove this, but we're going to be given that all trigonometric functions are continuous on their domain. Now there's two super important theorems that we should talk about involving the composition of functions. Let's read this one first and then talk about it. If f is continuous at b and the limit as x approaches a of g of x equals b, then the limit as x approaches a of f of g of x is f of b. What does that mean? Well, that says that if I have uh, the limit of the composition of functions and the outer function is going to be continuous, then I can bring the limit inside the outer function. So I'm just going to take the limit then as x approaches a of the inside function find its value, which must exist, and then I'll just substitute that into f. We're going to use this a lot throughout calculus, particularly in calculus 2. Now, Another important theorem is that if g is continuous at a and f is continuous at g of a, then the composition f of g of x is continuous at a. So essentially, now we've learned that no matter how we combine two continuous functions, either using arithmetic or by using composition, the result is a continuous function.
So let's apply this in a few examples. I'd like to evaluate the limit as x approaches pi of radical 3 cosine of x plus 7. Before we learned about the continuous functions, uh, we had uh, no uh, reliable means for evaluating uh, this function. We could get an estimate from a graph or from a numerical approximation, but we wouldn't really uh, have any confidence. But now we can say for certainty the following. We know that cosine of x is continuous at x equals pi. And so if I take cosine of x and multiply it times 3 and add 7 from our properties of continuous function, it's also going to be a continuous function. Furthermore, radical of x is continuous on its domain, and 3 cosine pi plus 7 equals 4, so it's going to be continuous at x equals 4. So the composition, the square root of 3 cosine of x plus 7, is continuous at x equals pi. So now we can just evaluate using direct substitution. And so the limit value is going to be 2. In our second example, we're going to find the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x. Really, the, the purpose of this question is to show that the absolute value function is also continuous. So with absolute value functions, we'd like to be able to use direct substitution as well. And so we're going to show that it's a continuous function when x equals 0. Now, there's really not any question about any other number except 0, because if I rewrite the absolute value of x as a piecewise defined function, each branch is a polynomial. And so it's clear that for every value except for 0, uh, the absolute value of x is continuous. So what about 0? Well, the function value itself is 0. And if I take the limit from the left, I get 0. And if I take the limit from the right, I get 0. So the limit exists when x equals 0. And it equals the function value. So the absolute value function is continuous. And uh, so now we've answered the question. The, we can just use direct substitution limit as x approaches 0 of absolute value of x is 0. So one last example. We're given a piecewise defined function. And uh, it depends on this parameter k, some constant k, and what we would like to know is for what value or what values of k will this function be continuous. Now notice that with this function both the left branch and the right branch are polynomials. And so the only thing we have to do is choose k so that these two branches meet when x equals 2. Well, for them to meet, we need to have the uh, left limit equaling the right limit. And there is a small mistake here, which we're going to make a quick correction to. We're not going to choose x. x is fixed to be 2. We're going to choose k here. So we're going to choose k so that the left limit equals the right limit. All right, now if I evaluate the right limit, uh, I can go ahead and use direct substitution, put 2 in the place of x, and the result is a formula in k. That's how I got 2k squared plus 4. I just replaced x with 2. And then the left limit 
Again, I can just use direct substitution or replace x with 2, and I'll get a different formula in k. And so if I want these two to match up, then the left limit will have to equal the right limit. I'll have to set these two formulas equal to each other. And then solve. Now it's just an algebra problem. I have a quadratic equation in k. So let me go through the steps. Make one side 0, factor out the common factor of 2, factor the resulting quadratic on the inside, and that gives me the result that uh, the left limit will equal the right limit when either k equals 1 or k equals 2, and that in turn makes f of x continuous. Well, I hope you found this short video on the properties of continuous functions useful.